team has three eight-minute speeches. Proposition will begin the debate. After one minute of a speech, you will hear a bell, which sounds like this. Uh, which means points of information are now allowed. Speakers may stand up and offer points of information to the speaker who is currently giving the speech. After seven minutes, you will hear another bell. It means no more points of information. At eight minutes, a double bell, which means full time. Um, after the opening six speeches, there will be a four-minute reply speech, which is totally protected from points of information, which the opposition will give first, allowing the proposition to open and close the debate. Uh, I think that's all in the details of the rules we need for now. Uh, the motion for today is this house supports the assassination of dictators by foreign powers. Okay, that is the motion for today. I would remind you that this is a completely <coughs> impromptu debate. They've been preparing for one hour um, without any help of any electronic devices or any such thing in IFC. So everything you see now is based on one hour's preparation and their own intelligence and general knowledge. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope I do too. And um, good luck everybody on that motion. Can we hear from the first speaker of the proposition team, please? Ladies and gentlemen, when Les Miserables popularized this idea of letting the people sing and hearing the voices of the people, we say that it's not actually that good in reality. That in most dictatorial regimes, in most countries or states where the people are being oppressed, you don't actually often hear the voices of angry men. Because in reality, what we see is the crackdown of dictators of their people. What we see are situations more like Syria and not so much like Paris in the 19th century. What we see is bloodshed, is the dictator being cornered and therefore fighting back using all its means possible in order to combat the people rising up against him. And that is why on side proposition today, we say we support the foreign assassination of dictators in certain circumstances. In my speech today, firstly I'll start with laying down the principle that proposition stands for. This idea of minimizing damage, a utilitarian approach, which we say we want to sacrifice this one life in order in exchange for the greater good of the many. Secondly, we'll move on to analyze the nature of dictators and how they're being irrational and capricious and therefore very unpredictable. And finally, explain how this is actually a catalyst for toppling or perhaps the start of the toppling of many dictatorial regimes. We'd like to clarify that today we would contextualize it and say we're not saying assassination is a legitimate diplomatic tool that everyone should use in every circumstance. What we're saying today is that it is a last resort. When we're dealing with very extreme circumstances, we say this is a legitimate way out. Okay. Our extension will be um, this idea of mutual interest on a mass scale, looking at the international stage as a whole. But firstly, before we go into this first principle, just a few clarifications of, of today's debate. This idea of assassination, we're talking about extrajudicial killing. This idea of removing a dictator once and for all by a foreign power, foreign intervention. The idea of dictators, we're talking about a governmental authority figure which has overstepped an authority, overstepped the political legitimacy granted to him within the people. We say we want to remove these dictators. Yes, sir. Would you assassinate Kim Jong-un? Sir, what we're saying today is that we're not going to judge on a case-by-case basis as to, okay, we're going to assassinate this country's dictator and not this other country's. What we're saying is that we're going to advocate this broad principle, the idea that we want to legitimize this as a tool, as a diplomatic, sure? yes, sir, a diplomatic me mechanism for dealing with certain extreme circumstances. And going back into the principle, this idea of the utilitarian approach. Because what we say is a lot of these dic dictators that we see around the world today are basically wrecking havoc within their own regimes. We see in places like Malawi, for example, when dictators actually sent letter bombs to all their political opponents and therefore destroy all the political opponents Ma within a state. What we see is that in these particular dictatorial regimes, we see these dictators having absolute power and no checks and balances within the government. We say that these dictators are able to exploit the power granted to them in a very illegitimate means and because these dictators very often have a military backing, the idea that they were able to rise into power was because they have so the backing you, of the military. We say that when you corner these dictators, um, when you threaten these dictators, when you try to take away their power in a means that is not as extreme as assassination, what you have is a fighting back, being backed into a corner, in which case there is even more bloodshed and even more, even more damage to the country as a whole. 
And we say that when you have this sort of context, when you have this sort of background, that what we say today is that we want to deal with the root of the problem. We want to deal with this problem and cut off the cancer's growth by removing the center of that power, the very uh, the, the root of the whole problem within the dictatorial regime. So as I later analyzed for you in my speech, the idea is within a dictatorial regime, the governmental structure is not like, say, other democracies where no. there are branches of power. We say that the power actually originates from that one figure at the center of this whole web. So what we say today is because we advocate for saving the lives and the stability of the entire regime, we don't want more bloodshed, we don't want the people to be oppressed, to have, say, for example, in Zimbabwe, to have land taken away from farmers no. who legitimately deserve their land, we say we want to sacrifice and take out and remove that one power figure. And before opposition comes out and says, oh, we need to protect things like sovereignty, like respecting diplomatic and foreign boundaries, what we say today is that when you have a country which has already been under, that the legitimacy and authority of the government has already been undermined, we say we don't really think things like sovereignty stands in a situation when you have a dictator in place. When the people are being oppressed, we say that other states have the authority to come in and try and rescue the, the oppressed. But moving on to analyze this idea of the nature of dictators. Because we say we can't rationally understand and estimate the motives and consequences of what a dictator will do when you do certain things to the dictator. Plus we say dictators, yeah. by their very definition, are people who are very irrational in what they do. That are people who have seized the power within a government and are people who want to hang on to their ideological grasp yeah. over the power of their country. What we see is that these dictators want to maintain their grasp on power, they want to maintain their stronghold within the governmental hierarchy, I'll take your mincer. And therefore, when you have a dictator backed up into a corner, when the people try to rise up against him or when there's a revolution within that very country, what we see is actually um, a backlash where the dictator lashes out and tries to fight back. And we say that amount of bloodshed and damage and havoc that is wrecked is actually much worse than removing that dictator himself. Yes, sir. You're assuming that all assassinations are successful. What if it's a failed assassination, no, sir. such as the situation of Fidel Castro? What exactly is your ultimate intention there? What we're saying today is that, number one, we never said from the beginning that we're, that this assassination is going to be successful. We absolutely accept and concede that many of these, that the attempt of an assassination, what we're saying today is that the idea is, as I'll move on to my last point about the catalyst for the toppling of a regime, is the idea that when you have a foreign intervention into a dictatorial stronghold, when the people of that dictatorial regime realize that this charismatic dictator is not infallible, that the political rhetoric about this infallible regime being able to oppress the people is not actually true. When there are outside forces actually trying to undermine the legitimacy of a dictator, we say this actually sends a message that this is no longer an infallible charismatic personality cult. But finally, wrapping up this idea of the nature of dictators, what we want to establish is the idea that we have dictators out there who are so capricious and so irrational, they want to claim onto the power in whatever means possible. So other right. rational incentives, such as trying to invite these dictators out, trying to hold peace talks, for example, simply does not apply when we're talking about a dictator who is willing to, to harm its own people in order to maintain his authority. So we say in certain situations like this, when we're dealing with irrational people, an assassination may be the only way out. And finally, so why and what are the effects to, to the regime as a whole? As I, as I just explained, the idea is within a dictatorial regime, very often that governmental structure stems from that one center personality figure. For example, even using your example of Fidel Castro, the idea is Castro tries to maintain that personality count, trying to maintain that he is always healthy, that he is an immortal political figure. What we say is when you actually remove that, that figure or when the foreign forces try an attempt to actually bring down that dictatorship as a regime, what we see is we're actually able to undermine that rhetoric that the dictator, dictatorship is able to use. We actually bring down that personality cult that we see and therefore start a crack dict dictatorial regime that we see in many of these countries. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, proposition is not going to tell you that this is always going to work. That when you assassinate a leader, therefore there's going to be a democratic paradise. What we're telling you is that this is a legitimate tool and that's why this motion stands. Thank you.